Hello everyone, and welcome to this uh, kind of somber episode of Box Office Receipts. I'm your host, Tyler Callahan, and uh, before we get to the sad news, uh, we'll just uh, get through the numbers. Alright, so on to In the Pipeline. Let's talk international numbers with Tenant. Deadline is reporting that from a Wednesday to Sunday opening, Warner Brothers is looking at $53 million for its opening weekend in countries that it has opened in. That is actually really, really good. Remember last episode, they were talking around $25 million as the base, and it has now doubled it. Now again, under normal conditions, an international total for a Nolan movie could be three to $400 million, so it still has a ways to go, but this does show money could be made. For China's release in a few weeks, pre-sales are looking good enough right now for a $30 million opening, but after that, it depends on word of mouth. If people find it too confusing and they do not like it, it'll die real quick. So depending on the domestic gross, if it goes that well, uh, my early prediction is Tenant will at least make 300 million worldwide, but I can see it getting closer to half a billion if it legs out. Talking about domestic numbers, the new Mutants have actually performed decently, especially with its terrible reviews. Right now it's at a 7 million opening weekend, just under double what Unhinged made last weekend. For the new Mutants to hit, say, 40-50 million, it depends on how many screens will it lose to Tenant and two. Uh, will it have the legs Tenant is expected to have? I don't think so. Uh, because like Unhinged, The New Mutants has had bad reviews. Uh, and while I've heard word of mouth is okay, it's not good, it's not bad. But like I've mentioned before, okay movies will not cut it as the pandemic does not improve. People will only take the risk for movies they really, really want to see or they're really good. This means Wonder Woman, Tenant, Black Widow. Mulan could have been that, but now it's only for certain countries. Speaking of Unhinged, it turned out people really did not care for it with it coming in at 2.6 million for the weekend for a total of 8.5 million. Bill and Ted Faced Music has made 1 million in its opening weekend, but this is interesting because it is also available on VOD to buy or rent. So the fact they made that much while people can sit at home and watch it shows that if someone has the option to see a movie they really want to in theaters, they'll probably will do it. Warner Brothers is still being quiet on numbers for Inception, so the next thing to look forward to is the Tenant releasing next weekend. For that, AMC did note that they will have two-thirds of their theaters open for it, and Regal says over 50% of their theaters are open. Without California and New York, let's see how Tenant can do. I'm going to say 15 to $20 million opening. If it does pass that, I'd assume most showings are sold out. Moving away from box office numbers, Paramount announced a slew of updates to their 2021 and 2022 schedule. They now have officially moved the G.I. Joe movie Snake Eyes, which was set to come out this October, and will now come out next October. Another movie that moves almost exactly one year as well is Clifford, the Big Red Dog movie, which moves from this November to next November. Also for next February, Paramount will release the Billie Holiday movie they bought at Cannes, releasing right now one week before the cutoff date for the Oscars. For 2022, they now have penciled in Scream 5 to come out January 2022, and Paranormal Activity 7 will come out that March. For 2020, that leaves only one movie coming out, and that is Coming to America 2 for Christmas. While there have been rumors of it being sold to Netflix, nothing is official. Also, Deadline is teasing that A Quiet Place Part 2 may come back and release sometime in 2020, which I think is actually a good move for the studio. Right now, the schedule holds and the vaccine starts to distribute by the end of the year. A lot of people will be going to theaters and a lot of movies will be coming out in 2021. However, if Tenet does well, Paramount may risk A Quiet Place for a Halloween release, and that way it can collect some cash and move it along the distribution route. Because you also have to think this will not be a normal Halloween kids will not be out trick-or-treating, and you can't go up, get dressed up, and go to a bar. So, one of the ways to have fun would be to watch a horror movie in theaters. A quiet Place could be the focus of this since Halloween is out of the picture. They move to next year. Looking at these early numbers for Tenant from earlier, if this movie can do around 300 million worldwide, that is just a few million under the first one, and should be profitable. If I was them, I'd wait till mid-September, and if things are going good, push for an end of October release and get it out. DC has also moved another movie, with The Kingsman being pushed again to next February, with New, Mut- New Mutants now out. This is the next movie that keeps getting pushed back, having now been delayed an entire year since its original date, which was this past February. For new movies, it's been a while, but Disney has actually bought a movie. For years now, the studio usually focuses on movies developed by their studios, but not this time. So not much is known about the movie, but it's a live-action film set in the world of movies. It's being written by John Whittington, who has written some of the recent Lego movies. The Hollywood Reporter did note that they did have to outbid Warner Brothers for it, so there was competition. I think for Disney, it may be valuable because since it takes place in the world of movies, they can use their extensive IP collection for it. They did this a bit with the Disney princesses in Wreck-It Ralph 2, so this would be on a larger scale. 
The project is very early as they just bought it and it still needs everything from director, title, casting, release date. So this is 2022-2023 movie at the earliest. Lastly, the last story is a terrible one. Over the weekend, the shocking news broke that Chadwick Boseman passed away due to colon cancer. He was 43. He has been battling cancer since 2016, which, considering what he's done in the past four years movie-wise, is pretty amazing that he was fighting that while filming all those movies. Uh, but keeping it on movies, his performances as Black Panther has inspired young kids of color as they finally had a big superhero that looked like them. He will leave a legacy not only for movies, but for kids around the world. Thoughts and prayers go out to his family. Rest in peace. And I'm not going to end. This is not a normal podcast. I'm not going to end it with the usual plugs. You know what they are. Just thank you for listening and see you next week.